Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. Ambulance Tasmania is claiming the first night of the Liberal government promise to crack down on ramping has been a success. But union and nurses say there are still significant issues and it's not the only problem with staff shortages also plaguing the sector. A push to increase efficiency and save lives. Overnight, the first stage of a ramping ban saw crews offload patients in just 60 minutes. Our working target is 80%. On Saturday, all four hospitals in the state hit 80%. On Sunday, all four hospitals in the state hit 80%. There are still concerns about resourcing, despite the Liberals' plan for a recruitment blitz. We'll be going back in uh, to push the Premier, uh, to push the Health Minister to put the resourcing in that's needed into the budget to make sure it's a multi-system response. It comes after just three of five ambulance crews serviced all of Launceston on Saturday. And through good luck rather than good management, there was no critical incident that wasn't responded to in a timely fashion. The industry, one of many not immune to staff shortages. Periodically, we have short notice or unplanned sick leave. Um, we take many steps to try and resolve those vacancies, including bringing additional staff in on overtime. The Liberals believe they have the solution, committing to an election promise of 27 more community paramedics by 2028. Caring for Tasmanians wherever possible in their own homes so they're not uh, ending up in the emergency department. The staff based in regional areas like Queenstown, Scottsdale and New Norfolk a paramedicine program also set to be expanded, allowing them to spend more time with patients at home without the pressure to rush to the next job. So you'll see the community paramedics linking in with primary health services um, in that very much preventative and chronic disease um, management sort of space. Guy Barnett is set to host a roundtable meeting on Wednesday to discuss the ramping protocol with members from the ANMF and HACSU expected to attend as they continue their fight to heal the system. And what we'll be taking to the table is the government's promise to reduce the time that ambulances wait from the current 60 minute protocol that was introduced this morning down to the 30 minutes that they promised. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. The New Look Greens team in Tasmania has labelled the health crisis one of its key focuses. Rosalie Woodruff announcing the shadow portfolios for her five-person team. The returning deputy leader set to take on Treasury, Education, Housing and Energy. Energy is a huge issue going forward. There are some massive decisions the state needs to make when it comes to energy. We've campaigned hard to support our renters and also to build more homes in Tasmania. So we'll be going back and fighting for that issue. All the new parties will meet when Parliament returns in May. An earthquake has been felt by dozens of residents in southern Tasmania. A 2.3 magnitude quake shaking northeast of Huonville shortly after 10 o'clock last night at a depth of 7 kilometres. Thankfully, there have been no reports of injury. Bobbing around in the ocean for 90 minutes, two kilometres off the north Tasmanian coast. The man and woman from this capsized tinny have a pair of kayakers to thank for being back on dry land. They'd been fishing off Hawley Beach when the boat overturned yesterday afternoon. Kayakers hearing their screams for help and alerting authorities. The boat has been towed back to shore and the boat is checked over by paramedics. They were wearing life jackets. State Labor has called for urgent action to unlock energy projects which have the potential to be a benefit to Tasmanians. Despite new figures suggesting Tasmania's economy is falling behind, one company is pushing ahead with a green methanol plant expected to boost jobs. Better harnessing Tasmania's hydro and wind resources. State Labor frustrated at the time period to get projects like Able Energy's $170 billion green methanol venture at Bell Bay off the ground. There are projects uh, like here at Bell Bay that would put hundreds of jobs into the network in Tasmania and return the Tasmanian economy in billions of dollars. But this government have been all talk and no action for years. Once powered by oil, then gas, Bell Bay is being decommissioned to be repurposed 
for a new future. We need to get more renewable energy into the grid so that we can support manufacturing like this. Now the funding's there, it's really up to Tasmania to make sure it's got the power that's needed to support Able Energy. However, the company insists it is still on track to produce 300,000 tonnes of green methanol per annum by 2028. Able Energy has just received its draft connection report from TAS Networks and confirmed to Seven News today that it will indeed start production at Bell Bay in four years. It's now in the final stages of capital raising and while Abel concedes the appetite for international investors to put money into Tasmania is challenging, it's optimistic of success. In terms of growing our renewable energy uh, opportunities and renewable energy supply, that is a priority for our government. We have the needs, we have the supply that we need for now, but we need to grow. We've always acknowledged that. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. The federal government has voiced concern over increasing rates of mental illness among young people. To meet surging demand, Launceston's Headspace has officially launched its new centre, almost doubling the area available for services. A few small steps from its old digs, but a giant leap for mental health support. Launceston's Headspace has moved to its new home just 50 metres up the street. It's terrific, it's warm, it's inviting, it's something that young people I know will embrace really well. Young people themselves putting their heads together to design a space which works for them. Reid Adams Beckett is one of the project's consultants. From the wall art to the furniture, it all aims to be as welcoming as possible. To be able to help be a part of uh, the transition from the old headspace to the new headspace, it really does make a big difference. The new building offering bright rooms and almost double the floor space of its predecessor. It's been a juggle, so now having you know, 10 counselling rooms, a designated family room, telehealth room, it means more clinicians can see more people. And it can't have come any sooner. The 16 to 24 age bracket is experiencing the most mental health issues of any demographic. Because we know here in Tasmania and right around the country, there's been a rise in distress amongst young people. Headspace Launceston has provided more than 5,000 sessions of care this year alone. The free appointments providing important support. It's quite crucial in terms of uh, a young person's development, being able to learn more about your own mental health. Early intervention makes such a big difference in a young person's path in life. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. Celebrity chefs and dining experiences will feature at this year's Agricultured Festival. Now in its fourth year, it celebrates the agri-food sector's vital contribution to culture, community and the economy. Gastronomy is about getting out in the regions. It's celebrating the people, the place and the passion about food. And that's what agriculture is all about. So what we do is produce ethical free-range pork and a whole range of value-added small goods on farm, so we're one of the only farms, well, the only farm in Tasmania that's actually producing all European-style charcuterie. The event runs from August 1 to 4. A local charity is on a bold mission to collect a thousand coats for its campaign to keep Tasmanian children warm this winter. People urge to look through their closets with cost of living pressures hitting many families. A small gesture with a bigger impact. We are on a mission to collect 1,000 children's coats across the month of May uh, to make sure there isn't any Tasmanian child going without this winter. Tasmanians urge to dig out any winter woolies to help disadvantaged kids stay warm. Coats can have a really big impact. To be warm and dry when you arrive at school means you're in a better place to start your learning journey. With over 800 coats donated last year, that number is expected to skyrocket. Housing and financial hardship causing a surge in demand of services. Early as a month ago, we started receiving requests for warm clothing, particularly from new migrant families who are feeling uh, this new climate. Tassie mums are also calling for extra clothes like trackies, jumpers and hoodies, those extra layers to keep children warm and comfortable over the cooler months. Schools, workplaces and clubs are asked to host collection points in support of the campaign, which runs until May 30. 
Anyone who can't offer items but still want to make a difference can give money through the Tassie Mums website. Rebecca Gaydineris at 7, Tasmania News. After failing to kick a goal in the TSL's opening round, a three-point win over Lauderdale is a huge turnaround and even bigger morale boost for Launceston. The skipper putting it down to a few on-field tweaks, but mostly managing the mindset of the young squad. Very hard to keep the guys motivated, especially after a 160-point loss straight up round one after you've done all the work through pre-season. Um, but um, the guys were good. They didn't miss a training, they hit the track, we trained harder. And that brings us to this week's Crips Player of the Year tally. And Launceston's Josiah Burling is the three-vote winner from that important first win over Lauderdale. Noah Holmes takes the three for Clarence after handing Kimbra their first loss. And North Launceston's Oscar Van Dam scores the top vote for their win over Glenorchy. Two Queenslanders are heading to Tassie next summer as the Tigers' signing spree continues. Matt Kuhneman will add some spice to Tasmania's bowling. He's got 44 wickets and 23 catches to his name in the big bash from five seasons with Brisbane Heat. He'll be joined by Will Prestwich, who's been who's seen by Tassie selectors as an up-and-comer. Despite limited shield experience, he's taken four wickets in just three big bash matches for Brisbane. Good evening. Hobart reached 22 today, Launceston and Devonport 18, while 17 was the top in Burnie. Ooze and Friendly Beach is our high with 23 after a low of zero at Liawini. Grove 20 degrees, Liawini and St Helens 19, King and Flinders Islands 18, Strawn 15 today. Most of the cloud over the west and north today with higher clouds streaming through as well. Now the bigger picture shows cloud over southwestern WA with patchy high cloud over central Australia, more cover over Arnhem Land and the Cape. Tomorrow a cold front and low loom to our west, a trough near South Australia and a high over the Tasman Sea complete the picture. Some winds are on the way too as they pick up from the northwest to 30 knots and later to 35 knots over the west and south swells to 4 metres. We have a gale warning for waters between Tasman Island and Low Rocky Point, a strong wind warning for all remaining coastal waters apart from east of Flinders Island to St Helens Point but does include the inland lakes. Here's the forecast for tomorrow, a late shower moving in Hobart 22, 20 for Adventure Bay. Showers increasing for Taralea, 19 degrees. Launceston late showers, 21. Same for Devonport, a top of 20 though, 21 for Bridport. For Burnie, showers increasing later in the day, 20 the top, 20 for Strawn. Also late showers for Marawar, 20 the maximum. St Helens tomorrow, 21, 21 for Swansea. White Mark, 21, all expecting that shower later in the day as that cold front moves through. On Wednesday, the windy weather and showers will continue, contracting to the west and far south. Cool and partly cloudy on Thursday with showers easing from Strawn and King Island. And on Friday, fine apart from showers over the west, temperatures in the mid to high teens. A sunny 22 in Perth tomorrow, partly cloudy and 20 26 in Adelaide, late showers for Melbourne, sunny conditions for Canberra and Sydney, 27 in the Harbour City and a possible shower in Brisbane. Partly cloudy and 15 in Hobart, cloudy in Launceston right now as well, 14 currently and cloudy in Devonport, 13 degrees. Don't know what it is about every time I go on holiday, you're yapping about it Kim, is it because you miss me when I'm gone or you just can't wait for me to go away again? But I can tell you, it's great for the weight loss, first two days I lost four kilos, mm -hmm. ah, but I quickly got my bulk back, I can tell you, I got, got back on the boat and I was right. Uh, but. The bad thing for you is, Kim, and for everyone here, I brought all these gifts back for you, but they were seized at customs at the border. <laughs> Way too much information here, Murphy. <laughs>